Jesus this weekend. Jesus, you're awesome. God, I thank you so much for uh, just that intimate time of worship that we had today. I thank you for that time of just spending time soaking in your presence, hearing your heartbeat for us, um, how you, you gave up everything for us, Lord. And I pray that this morning as we wrap up this series, God, um, that we would learn more about you and more about ourselves and that we go deeper in our knowledge of who we truly are in you, God. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Well, have you ever found yourself in a line of thinking or in a thought process and wondered, how did I get there? How did I get to the destination where I landed in my thought process? Let me illustrate a little bit. Um, maybe you're mowing the lawn. That's like my hour of quiet a week. Or maybe you're driving with the radio off for some reason. Or maybe you're just one of those really lucky people that got a, a quiet moment to sit down with a cup of coffee. And you're just sitting there and you're just enjoying the peace and quiet of your morning or your day. And all of a sudden, somebody's name or a group of people comes into your head. And you're like, you start thinking about that person. And you begin thinking about, you know, maybe a, a something you did with them, a trip with them, an experience with them, uh, maybe a, an adventure you went on with that group of people. And then in the midst of thinking about that person, all of a sudden, something negative pops into your head. You're like, you know, remember that time? You start remembering, man, they said that one really mean thing to me. Or maybe they said many mean things to you. Or maybe you were hurt or offended by a group of people. And, and all of a sudden you're starting to think about all the times that that person wasn't very nice to you. And then you think about it a little bit more. And you think about it a little bit more. And then you go, you know what? I bet they don't feel as bad about that situation as I do. And you begin to go, you know, I should talk to them about that situation. And you keep thinking about it. And you keep thinking about it. And you go... You know, the next time I see them, I should just tell them off. I'm going to put them in their place. After all, I feel so bad about that former conversation that I need to go have this with them. And I need to make sure that they know how bad I feel. And what do you do? You begin to justify yourself. And you begin to feel, you puff yourself up a little bit. And you go, yeah, I was the one that was wrong. They need to feel bad about this too. And you keep thinking about it, and you keep thinking about it, and you go down the rabbit trail, right? And you get to a place maybe where you're like, you know what? We're no longer going to be friends anymore. Because I just know when I'm around that person, they do nothing but that mean stuff to me. If it's your boss, you're like, you know what? It is time to look for another job. They never treat me well in this job. I'm going to get online, get on Monster, get on Indeed. I'm just going to find another job. If it's a family member, you're like, you know what? They're not invited to Thanksgiving this year. I'm not letting them come. If it's your spouse, you know what? I've been putting up with this for too long. It's just time for us to get a divorce. There's no other course of action but that. Now what happens? Most of the time, we go on this line of thinking. We go down a rabbit trail, and we get to the end of it, and we go, whoa, that was really weird. How did I get from having my morning cup of coffee or mowing the lawn to... That person needs to get out of my life. And you go, that was weird. But sometimes, sometimes we let it kind of bury a seed in our thinking, don't we? We, we let it that, that kind of bury a seed in our thinking. We begin to just think negatively about that person all the time. And, and kind of a root of bitterness begins to kind of build up within us. And, and at some point we go, man, this relationship is just broken. How did you get there? How did you get from having a single thought on a person to I don't even want them in my life anymore? It's because you haven't re learned to renew your mind to the truth. But it doesn't just happen, does it, about somebody else. Sometimes we do this about ourselves, don't we? We're lonely, we're sitting alone, we're in a lonely place, and we've been isolated or separated for one reason or another. Either we feel like people have pushed us out of the group, or, or we, we pushed ourselves out of the group, and we've removed ourselves from community, from connection to our family, to our friends, maybe to our church, and we put ourselves off in the corner, and we begin to think negative thoughts about ourselves. And we go down to this rabbit trail of, I'm not good enough, I'm not smart enough, I can't accomplish X, Y, or Z. And that's what leads us into, if we believe that lie, sometimes anxiety, depression, worry, and it takes us to a place we weren't meant to go. Why do we do it? 
We do it because we haven't learned to renew our minds to the truth. We haven't learned to renew our minds to the truth. We've been in this series called Who Am I? We've been in this series called Who Am I? Trying to help us understand who we are in Christ, how he sees us, how we are to protect our, our, our thoughts, our emotions, our faith. How do we walk and navigate those paths and things like that? How do we go down the road of actually understanding the reality of who God really thinks we are and how he really sees us and how we can begin to see ourselves? And friends, I hope it's been a helpful journey to, for us to go on to talk about truth, to talk about our emotions, to talk about our faith. I hope it's been a helpful journey. But I want you to understand something. We've been talking about this in terms of it's a spiritual battle that we go through on a daily basis. And I think sometimes we think that that battle is somewhere out there, that it happens when I leave the house, that it happens when I go into a certain situation, or it happens when I go to church, or when I go to my job, or it happens somewhere over there. I want you to understand something. The battle for who you are is right here. The battle for who you are is right between your ears. This is the battlefield. This is the spiritual battle that you're in. It's about the way you think. It's about the way that I think. It's about the way that all of us think. So the scripture we've been using is Ephesians chapter 6. And we've been talking about putting on the armor of God. Take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having, having done all to stand firm. And we've talked about all this, fastening on the belt of truth, putting on the breastplate of righteousness, and your shoes on your feet, having the readiness by the gospel of peace. And in all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with, with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. And today, take up the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying at all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplication. The problem is, most of us think that our thought processes are all our own. Most of us think that the things that we think about are things that we've come up with ourselves. And this scripture of putting on the helmet of salvation and taking up the sword of the spirit is so important for us because we've got to realize how much we're inundated with other people's thinking and not the thinking of God himself. Just think about this. I have seven people in my family. They all have thought processes that they're giving me every day. <laughs> some of them good and some of them not so good. Most of you in here have a job or, or co-workers or classmates that you're interacting with on a regular basis. And they all have thought processes that they're telling you every day. Their idea, the ideas, their opinions. The music that we listen to. The radio stations that we listen to. The political ideas we listen to. The news that we watch, the books that we read. Everything in our world is telling us something and it affects the way that we think about our world. It affects the truth of the way that we think. It all has capacity to derail us or to keep us on a straight path depending on what we're putting into our heads. And the enemy knows this. The enemy knows that if he can keep you distracted up here, then the rest of the battle will be much harder than it should be. If he can get you distracted in your thought process about yourself and about other people, then it'll be much easier to keep you distracted from the battle that's taking place in your life. And what Paul is actually saying in this very simple scripture is simple to understand, but it's very, very hard to do. <laughs> Don't you hate things like that? It's so simple to understand, but it's so hard for us to do on a daily basis. Take up the helmet of salvation. Take up the helmet and protect your thought processes. Now, I'm not going to give you hot hats today. No hats, I promise. I'm not going to pass out any tinfoil hats for you today, right? We're not going to put anything on our heads. But what I want you to understand is that the helmet of salvation is a gift from the hand of our Father. The helmet of salvation is a gift to put over our thought processes to help us understand that we are truly and totally saved. You and I truly do have salvation from our Father. It is a gift that's been given to us. Listen to 1 Thessalonians. Since we belong to the day, it's a truth maybe you need to hear 
this morning. You belong to the day, not to the night. Be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and a helmet, the hope of salvation. Why? For God has not destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He's not destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. This word salvation is so important because it means wholeness. It doesn't mean just that you're saved by the blood of Jesus, though you are. The original word is wholeness, completeness, without lack, without something missing. And think about your thought processes for just a second. When you're like, I'm not good enough, I'm not smart enough, I'm not going to be able to accomplish, what are you saying to yourself? I have something missing. There's something missing in me that I need. And that's not true. That's why salvation, wholeness on your head is so important to protect your thought processes. You're not missing anything. Jesus has already done it all for you. And when you begin to think negatively about somebody else and like they said this bad thing to me, they offended me, they treated me badly, that means they have the ability to take something from you and they don't. They don't have the ability to take anything from you. Jesus has made you whole, complete in him. That's salvation. So key number one to renewing your mind to the truth is know your completeness. That's Adam's word for the day. Completeness. It's probably not even a real word. But know that you have complete wholeness in Christ. You're not lacking anything. Ah, oh, free. I'm not lacking anything. No one can take it away from me. God has said, you're good. You're perfect. You're righteous. You're holy. You're forgiven. All the things we've been talking about. If I know that I'm complete in him and not lacking anything, my thought process has become to come into alignment with his and the way he sees me. See, we need to get our thoughts connected to the only source that can tell us we're complete. We need to get our thoughts connected to the only source that can tell us we're complete, and that is Jesus himself. That's why he says, take up the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Take up the helmet to protect your thoughts, but don't just protect yourself. We've been talking about protection this whole series. Don't just protect yourself. Go on the offense with your thought processes. Take up that word of God. Speak that truth over you. Look about how God sees you as you read your Bible. Think about how he sees how complete you are. Think about how he sees what a smashing success the cross was for you and for me. Corey talked a lot about the protection, right? A couple weeks ago when she talked about the belt of truth. I love that Ephesians, even in the midst of it, turns it over and says, don't just use it to protect you. Use the word of God to go on the offense in your thought processes. Use the word of God to go on the offense in your thought processes. Listen to Hebrews 4. The word of God is alive and powerful. It's sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword. It cuts between your soul and your spirit, between your joints and your marrow. In other words, it can get into any corner of your life and root out the untruth. Listen to this. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. Guys, the word of God is the way to root out lies in your life. The word of God is the way to get in to those thought processes that are so negative and to get rid of them. The word of God is what actually can help you go on the offense when you're really on the defense in our negative thinking. Key number one is know your completeness. Key number two is surround yourself with Jesus. Surround yourself with Jesus' thinking, with the word of God, with worship music with daily devotionals, with reading Christian books. I hear there's a sale. No, I'm just teasing. Um, right? right? Um, like surround yourself with the thinking of God in your life over and over and over again. Surround yourself with coming to church 50 times a year. Surround yourself with the thinking of God. Surround yourself with Jesus so much that when you get squeezed, only he comes out. When you're in a negative place, only he comes out. We do this all the time, don't we? We surround ourselves with who we want to become and the way that we want to think. If you're a Cubs fan, you probably listen to WGN, right? Or watch WGN. You listen to, you know, what is it? Uh, ESPN 1000 or 720 or whatever it is out of Chicago. And you listen to the Cubs radio because you want to be a Cubs fan. If you're a Cardinals fan, <laughs> no competition there, right? If you're a Cardinals fan, 
You, you watch Fox Sports Midwest. You listen to AM 1230 when the Guards games come on. You surround yourself with that line of thinking. We, we do that all the time, don't we? With the news that we watch. It doesn't matter what your political bent is, Democrat, Republican, Libertarian, Green Party. I don't care. But whatever you feel like you are, you probably listen to that line of thinking. And what happens is when we put line of thinking into our heads, into our thoughts, into our processes, we begin to talk like that. My mom used to say it this way. When you put garbage in, you get garbage out. We need to shift that. We need to put Jesus in so we get Jesus out. We need to put Jesus in so that we get Jesus out. And there's no better way to think than to think like Jesus. Jesus every day was full of joy. Doesn't that sound good? To think joyful, to think hopeful, to think compassionate, to think love, to think, oh my gosh, it doesn't even matter what's going on in the world around me. It doesn't matter how negative people are, how divided they are, how frustrated they are. It doesn't matter. I can think above that. I don't have to think temporal, earthly stuff going on in the world around me. I can think eternal things. Because Jesus lives in me. Because I want to think like Jesus does. Jesus in, Jesus out. But Paul doesn't stop this verse there. He says, take up the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And then he says, pray. He says, pray at all times, with all prayer and all supplication. Pray at all times. Talk to me about what's going on. Involve the Holy Spirit. Pray at all times in the spirit of God. Involve the Holy Spirit in your life so that when you pray, stuff happens differently in your thought processes. You're actually going from a defensive person to an offensive person when you begin to pray. See, in this battle, you've been surrounded by so many lies that we've forgotten the right way to think. The human mind has great capacity in its brain to think about things, to be curious about things. We can do tremendous good with our thoughts or tremendous damage with our thoughts. And in the midst of it, what we have to do is tear down the matrix of lies that have been pulled over our eyes. We need to go on the offensive with our prayers. This is the best way to change the way that we think. It's the best way to begin to train ourselves to think like Jesus, is to go on the offensive with our prayers when a negative thought arrives. And you know what? I know, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that all of you in this room have the ability to do this. To train your mind to something different than the way you used to think. Do you know how I know? None of you in here are unpotty trained. <laughs> At one point in your life, you thought it was an amazing thing to be your pants. <laughs> you did! At one point in your life, you thought, if I pee my pants, mom or dad's gonna come by and change my diaper, and it'll be fine. <laughs> Some point in your life, you trained yourself to go, this is a bad idea. Now I'm gonna go over that porcelain white thing and pee in it, right? At some point in your life, you trained your mind to think differently than you did before. And just as a young child is disciplined to begin to think differently, you can discipline your mind to think differently. You can actually have what Paul calls self-control in your life and begin to think differently than you do right now. Ephesians 4 says it this way in the mirror translation. The truth about you has its ultimate reference in Jesus. Now you're actually free to strip off your old identity like a filthy worn out garment, less corrupted and cheated you into wearing it the first time. You can get rid of it. And here's this verse. Be renewed in your innermost mind will cause you to be completely reprogrammed in the way you think about yourself. Immerse yourself fully in this God-shaped new man from above. You are created in the image and the likeness of God. This is what righteousness and true holiness is all about. In other words, you can begin to reprogram yourself to think differently than even some of you are right now in this very room. Some of you in this very room, since I started talking about this subject, have been thinking negative thoughts. And it's time to reprogram. You've been thinking negative thoughts about yourself, maybe even about me and the things that I'm saying. And it's time for you to reprogram. It's time for you to think differently. So when a negative thought comes into your mind, don't go down the rabbit trail 
Pray a prayer of thanksgiving instead. Turn every curse that's in your mind into a blessing. Negative thought comes into mind. I'm not good enough to do X. I'm not smart enough to do X. No one will ever let me do X. Whatever it might be. As soon as that thought comes into your thought in your mind process, go, oh, thank you, God. Thank you that you don't see me that way. Thank you that you don't see me half complete. You see me fully complete. Thank you that you see me holy and righteous and blameless. Thank you that you see me as the embodiment of your son, Jesus Christ, because you see him living in me. Thank you, God, that I don't have to think that way about myself anymore. Thank you, God, that I'm free. Thank you, God, that all those negative thoughts about myself that keep coming to my mind, they're not true because you would never say those things about me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, God, that I am completely made new in you. Thank you, God, that the truth is that I'm free. So every time a negative thought comes your way, you just turn it around. You go, no, nope. I'm going to thank God that none of that is true. You can do this. Well, what about those negative thoughts about somebody else? <laughs> what about those negative thoughts? What do I do about them, Adam? I'm happy you asked. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, he says, Take captive your thoughts. Listen to this. For though we live in the world, we don't wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not weapons of this world. On the contrary, the weapons we have, they have the power to demolish strongholds. Do you ever feel like that? You've got a negative thought about that person that irritates you every time you see them. And you're like, that is such a big wall. I'll never be able to tear it down. Yes, you can. On the contrary, you have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we do what? We take captive every thought to make it obedient to Jesus Christ. We take captive every thought to make it obedient to Jesus Christ. Does Jesus see that person the same way you do? Probably not. Does Jesus see that person negatively? Nope. Either grace is sufficient for all of us or it's not sufficient for any of us. So if it's sufficient for all of us, then God probably sees even that person that every time, you know, it's like fingers on the chalkboard to have a conversation with them. Yes, Jesus sees them differently than you do. Some of you know exactly who that person is in your world as soon as I said that. Or that group of people. Here's the deal. You have the power to demolish that thought. You have the power to take captive that thought and get rid of it. And that's why Paul says, pray in the spirit at all times with prayer and with supplication. Supplication is an appeal to God. When you begin to have a negative thought about somebody else, turn it into an appeal for that person instead. Turn it into an appeal for that person instead. God, I thank you for her, her, whoever they are. You might start that way. It's okay. I thank you for them. I thank you that their identity is not defined by how I feel about them. Oh, gosh, do you know how hard that is to pray? I thank you that my opinion of them does not determine who they are in you. God, I don't know what they're going through. I'm not sure I want to know because I don't like them very much. But... Teach me how to pray for them. Thank you that, that you see them differently. Thank you that you have dreams and destiny and purpose for their life. God, I don't know what they're going through. Maybe they're always mean to me because they've got a terrible situation with one of their kids at home. Maybe they're always mean to me because they're living paycheck to paycheck and they don't know how they're going to pay the bills this month. That's why they're always grouchy. I don't, whatever it might be, I don't know why they're the way that they are to me, God. But help me. Help me to see them as you see. Help me to see their destiny and their purpose, their identity in you. Help me to see it, God, because I can't see it right now. Begin to appeal for them. And imagine this. Let's go back to our story at the beginning. Imagine you're mowing the lawn, you're sitting quietly with your cup of coffee, and you knew that every time a person's name or a group of people came into your head, that was the Holy Spirit saying, I want you to pray for them right now. Mm -hmm. Imagine that. I tried this this week. 
Taking a shower, people's names popped in my head. Okay, God, I'll pray for them. I was praying a lot this week. <laughs> Sitting down and watching Netflix, the person's name, oh, I'm praying again. <laughs> Brushing my teeth this morning, praying again. Trying to read through my sermon notes before you all got here this morning, praying again. Imagine if every time somebody's name came into your head, it was God's invitation for you to minister to them in the power of the Holy Spirit. To minister to their life. Because he wanted to see change take place in their life. He wanted to use you to do it. You know, we, we face these kind of challenges every day. You go to work and you see something that needs to be fixed. We have a choice, don't we, at work? If we see something that needs to be fixed, we can sit there and complain about it, which never solves any problems. Or we can get curious about why is that problem taking place and go attack it and get creative. You know, you might get promoted at work if you do start solving problems. Right? We have that choice every day when we go to work. You have the same choice in your thought processes. Every time you have a negative thought about yourself or somebody else, you have the opportunity to get curious about it and go, why am I so negative about he or she or about me right now? And then get compassionate. Get curious about them and then get compassionate. Get curious and then get compassionate. If it's for you, maybe you need to love on yourself more. If it's about somebody else, maybe you need to love them more. Imagine what would happen if we did this, guys. Imagine if we began to all think differently. I'm whole. I'm complete. Nobody can take anything from me, and I'm not giving anything to anybody else because God has given me everything I need. Imagine if we began to think differently. And said, you know what? The word of God is the thing that I'm going to keep putting in so that when Jesus goes in, Jesus is the only thing that comes out. Imagine if we began to think differently about ourselves. And every time a negative thought of I'm not good enough, not smart enough comes into our heads, we begin to turn it ahead and go, gosh, thank you, Jesus. You don't look at me that way. Imagine if we began to think differently about others. And every time a name came into our minds, we're like, that's an opportunity for me to minister to them. It may not be face to face, but sitting here in my quiet place. I can pray for them, that I can see them differently, that they can see themselves differently, and life change take place. Would you stand with me this morning? And I want you to do something weird for me. All of you that just got nervous, it's not that weird. <laughs> see this woman behind you? I want you to do this for me. Just put your hands right there. I'm going to pray for you. Jesus. Renew our minds to the truth that we are holy, righteous, and blameless in your sight, that you love us, that you paid every price for us. God, renew our minds to the truth that every person that's come into our brain in the last half an hour while I've been talking, you died for them too. You care about them too. You have destiny and dreams and purposes for them too. And God, we minister to that person right now. And we say, give them freedom. Give them hope. Use me this week to love them and be compassionate towards them like I've never been before. In Jesus' name.